Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Revelation 17 and verse 14. Hear what the Bible says. These shall make war with the Lamb. The final battle now. And the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. That Lamb that was slain is not only a Savior. He is the Lord of Lords and is the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Hallelujah. Emmanuel. God is with us and he shall reign, he shall reign, he shall reign forevermore. He's not just a savior, he's king. And the Bible says when it has to do with war with the nations in the battle of Armageddon, he's not coming as savior. He sits as a rider upon the horse. In his majestic power and royalty the Bible says he had a name written on his lamb that name is the Word of God and that fire came a sword came out of his mouth and devoured the nations this is the king that we serve it matters that you know him as king one last scripture still the same Revelation chapter 19 and verse 16 Revelations 19 and verse 16 I like us to read together if you love Jesus ready read please and he hath on his vesture and on his tie the name written king of kings and lord of lords this settles once and for all that jesus is not only savior jesus is king and if you must explore all the dimensions of jesus that makes for the efficiency of the believer because the bible says looking up to jesus so you don't just look up to Savior Jesus. You must also look up to King Jesus. There are implications of the dimensions you find in him. Are we together? So I said how that when you discuss Jesus as Savior, man does not have any active role there. It was all done by Savior Jesus we only became privileged recipients of that expression of love and mercy and benevolence but please look up now when the lord begins to reveal himself to you as king the entire dynamics of your christian experience changes because in the revelation of jesus as king man is no longer a weak helpless sinner when you reveal Jesus as king, man is now a responsible son of the kingdom and then an ambassador of the kingdom. The dynamics of the operations change. As savior, man is a weak, helpless person in need of mercy. But the moment you bring that royalty dimension, we are no longer the weak people just waiting for mercy. Number one, we are sons of the kingdom because we are part of the king's family. Are we together? Then number two, we have a mandate. Man has a responsibility. Most believers are not matured and cannot do so much within the cosmos because they have not met Christ as king. They do not understand the entire discourse of the kingdom. Man is no longer a weak, I wrote here, helpless being but a responsible son and a citizen of the kingdom. Please listen to me. When Jesus is revealed as king, there is a twofold mandate that man has. One is to the king and the other is from the king to the nations. Please listen. When Jesus is revealed as king, man has a mandate. Number one, an obligation now to the king. Then an obligation from the king to the nations. You have to understand this. What is our mandate to the king? Please write. Our mandate to the king is complete loyalty, surrender, 
and obedience complete loyalty surrender and obedience this is the mandate of every citizen of the kingdom to the king our mandate to the king is loyalty surrender and obedience this is the creed of every true kingdom citizen it is the signature that defines your responsibility within the kingdom it's no longer the weakness and irresponsibility that comes by saying i am helpless at this point you have been empowered by the spirit so you are not helpless we have a mandate in honor to the king we owe him number one our loyalty number two our surrender number three our obedience listen to me i know you are in the kingdom which is also a measure of your spiritual maturity when i find these tripartite factors working in your life the more you mature as a believer that sense of spiritual independence begins to leave you in fact the bible says it this way jesus speaking to simon peter he said when you are young you are allowed to go wherever you want to go john 21 he says but when you become old another will have to hold your hands and will lead you to a place that you may not even want you are constrained here's how paul says it the love of god constrains us this creed got to Paul so much, he would boldly identify himself, I, Paul, a bond servant. That's the language of kingdom. That's the language of matured believers. That is the language of those who will be trusted. I'm going to be showing you three levels of authority as a reward for working with the king. There are three levels of authority that God confers upon men, his sons and citizens in the kingdom when you have a track record of loyalty of surrender and of obedience to the king now watch this when jesus is revealed as savior the gift is equal no matter who you are no matter what you do are we together to the baby who was born and the person who has lived most righteous in the flesh and the greatest sinner when you all come it is the same gift you are given rewards only happen when you come to the kingdom at that point you will now know that not everything in the kingdom is a gift there are rewards he gave on to some he gave on to some he loves everybody equally but the distribution of spiritual possibilities now are according to these three things this is what separates men into the kingdom you find out that some seem to be more anointed some seem to be trusted with certain levels i am telling you that it is not governed by the love of god it is governed by the degree to which they have understood the kingdom and they have pledged in experience their loyalty let's repeat it loyalty surrender and obedience one more time loyalty surrender now look up when you give your life to christ uh let me say something not, not, not to insult what we have known but i hope you know that in the revelation of jesus as savior you don't really give your life to jesus as we say i know we say it as preachers but what we mean classically speaking you can't give your life there's something already wrong with that life are we together now so what happens is you receive of his life giving of your life happens in the kingdom that is what we call surrender when you give your life you pour it like a drink offering that is the language of kingdom people so salvation is a receiving thing there is nothing you are giving God when Jesus is revealed as Savior absolutely nothing you are not doing me any favor you are not giving him anything the language of surrender is it not in your Bible Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 I beseech you therefore brethren it says by the message of God is that in your Bible that ye offer uh, yourselves that's the that's it there present yourself <laughs> your bodies in fact as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god and the bible calls it your reasonable act of service are we together that is the price for being used by god not receiving surrender so when you come to the king 
you will now begin to learn that in the kingdom listen carefully please don't miss this in the kingdom the entire economy of the kingdom revolves around the will of the king write that word will down please w-i-double-l will the will of the king thank you the will of the king is a description of his desire his agenda and his intention that means the investment of the kingdom that follows any citizen is to the degree to which you have demonstrated willingness to bring to pass the will of the king jesus began to give the people a kingdom sense in matthew chapter 6 when he taught them what we know to be the lord's prayer in teaching the lord's prayer this is what jesus said that when you pray pray thus our father are we together which art in heaven he says hallowed be your name he's not saying recite it or repeat it even though that is beneficial he's teaching the protocol to approaching god I'm not teaching on that hopefully maybe in one of the sessions we'll touch on it our father means that you have to come to god knowing that he's the ultimate source or sustainer comes from the word abba that means when you come to god there's no plan b you don't come hoping there are many alternatives you must come with this revelation that he is so our father second line of the prayer which art in heaven that means he's in a dimension that is not physical so faith will be needed for your contact which is in a realm that is not physical are we together now number three hallowed be your name come with the spirit of reverence and come in honor to all his multifaceted dimensions i hope you know the name he's talking about hallowed be your name there are many names that he was called that you come in reverence because all the answers you will be receiving you will be receiving is captured in one or more of his names if you are coming to ask for supplies it's Jaira that will answer you if you are coming in need are, are we together now so it says to hallow be your name then the next line says your kingdom the governing influence of your person your kingdom comes how by your will being done in the earth I know that this rendition puts a full stop there and sincere effort by translators but there's not supposed to be a full stop there the next line explains how the kingdom come that your kingdom comes anywhere your will is done so when you want the kingdom of God to come find out what his will is his kingdom means his influence when you see a sick person what is the will of god there so the only way to bring the kingdom to come is to execute the will of god over that sick body are we together thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth he didn't say on earth he says in earth and the first earth is you then your environment let me repeat you that earthen vessel then the environment forget about the environment when the kingdom finds expression in you you now become a perfect description of heaven in its entirety do you know what it means for the kingdom to come in you that means everything that has not been planted that means everything that is not a reflection of the kingdom you have the authority to root it out this is what gives us the basis to rebuke sickness and declare over your life that I, in the name of jesus i go from glory to glory what are you doing you are enforcing the will of god is someone learning tonight now many believers wonder why we were saved by the same blood please look up everybody saved by the same blood the same savior yet the efficiency of certain believers with respect to the program of god with respect to kingdom come and it looks as though there seems to be a bias it looks like god has a particular have, have you wondered why it looks like god just isolated a few people and decided to invest his attention invest his grace i am telling you that that disparity did not come from the revelation of jesus as savior it is the king dimension that produced that disparity because when you know jesus as king you will now know that god himself has a program and that everyone who willfully subscribes to the making of that program to happen experientially 
truly becomes a friend of God and secures certain levels of investment upon his life. Hmm. Are we together? So, he saved me. I didn't do anything. I just received it. But now that I know him as king, I realize that the king has a program. And as a faithful son, in gratitude to what he did as savior, I become an eternal partner. I spend myself without feeling bad. This is why you see we seem to spend ourselves like madmen. The, the revelation of him being savior empowers us to serve him as king. And we serve him wholeheartedly. Are we together? If he gave his all and his best for me, what is my energy that I'm spending for him? I do this because, number one, I love him. But I do this because it is a joy and an honor to see the king smile because of me. When he gave five talent, two talent, and one, the Bible says when they went and traded it and made five, two, remember? He, they brought joy to him and he said, well done good and faithful servant please hear me god has a program that program is not engineered by the savior the program is engineered by the king what is god's program listen carefully what exactly is god's program i hope that we'll talk some more about that this is a kingdom conference because let me tell you if you want to secure certain dimensions of the power and the grace of god is more than just praying and saying lord you died for me the theology that leaves the believer just receiving receiving alone and stopping there respectfully speaking i submit to you it's not a responsible and balanced theology there is a responsibility component the bible says we are saved not by works but unto good works is that in your bible yes in ephesians chapter 2 i believe and verse 10 give it to us please 2 and 10 and i hope god is speaking to us we'll find somewhere to pray let's read together if you're a responsible christian one to read for we are his workmanship uh-huh created in christ jesus help me unto good works which god had before ordained that we should walk in them. Do you believe that scripture? Now go to the same Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. Ephesians 3 and verse 10. Let's read together. One to read. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. So there is a responsibility that is given to the believer we were not just saved to roam around there is a responsibility component this is where kingdom teachings like purpose this is where kingdom teachings like the ministry of the holy spirit are we together discipleship is the key that mentors new believers to become people of stature and maturity because now we begin to teach them doctrine methodically communicated line upon line now believers now start seeing the value of prayer if you do not know jesus as king many things that are taught in the church will not you will not see their value what is the value of warfare what forces are you fighting again all that you know is it is finished why must i give to the kingdom what kingdom why must i spend my life why should i contend for longevity when my name is already written in the lamb's book of life it is the revelation of the king and the kingdom that gives value to all these forces systems of advantage that we spend time teaching believers unfortunately we are mentoring a lot of believers who do not see the applicability of the things we are teaching so when you teach someone that is the will of god to be a billionaire that sounds ridiculous and it sounds like carnality until they understand that the king's business will require that degree of financial investment are you getting the point now when you teach someone that i will live 70 80 90 100 years and the person says in this wicked world until you find out that your longevity is profitable for the kingdom are we together now yes what does it mean to raise responsible and godly children who transform society you may not see the need for it 
until you find out that you're raising these godly children is giving God more bodies that can serve his purposes. So now you're raising the children does not just become a parental responsibility. It turns to a ministry. So many things that we're teaching in the body only find their value when you know Jesus as king. And when you now come to the kingdom, now you begin to understand. Ah, so I see. Do you know why many believers backslide? And do you know why many believers become unserious? Because the purpose component in your work with God is unveiled when you know Christ as king. Now you know that there are kingdom responsibilities beyond just getting up, going to a job, getting married, ha having children and dying. You now begin to tie your life to something, an agenda and a cause that is bigger than you. This now makes your Christian experience exciting. There is a reason to go to bed. There is a reason to get up in the morning and you can measure the degree to which you are bringing joy to the king. You can know God is pleased with you. God himself speaking about Jesus said, this is my beloved son. He said, in whom I am well pleased. At the Mount of Transfiguration, he said, I am well pleased. And he says to hear him. Please hear me. The revelation of Jesus as Savior, let me repeat one last time, brings two responsibilities upon the believer. Number one, your mandate to the king loyalty surrender and obedience to the will of the king sir the assignment of the power of god the assignment of the word of god the assignment of angels the assignment of the holy spirit all of these spiritual forces only work within the circumference of the will of god the power of God cannot operate outside of the will of God. The assignment of the power of God is to bring anything that is outside the will of God into alignment. Are we together? So if you are sick, that sickness is not the will of God. So the assignment of the healing anointing is to compel that condition to now reflect the will of God. The will of God is the believer's zone of safety. Outside the will of God, there is no guarantee of protection, preservation. Are we together now? The entire life of the believer in the kingdom revolves around the will of God. So our first mandate is to be able to give up your will. Now, you see, the way God operates huh, is because he's a God of love. He left you with your will so that relinquishing your will to take his will becomes an act of volition not force he still left you with your will that means you can receive jesus as savior and say god i make my choice that i'm not interested in your will he will respect you but the consequences that follow neglecting his will will also come are we together I can choose today as an act of my will that I do not want to serve the mandate God gave me as a man of God. I can, and you will respect it. I can today get up and say, ladies and gentlemen, I am tired of ministry and I'm announcing to you that I'm still a Christian. It's only that I'm not, I, I choose. And heaven will respect it. But your bishop, no, 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 I'm joking. <laughs> you don't know what we have held on this journey my brother we died long ago long ago long ago long ago long ago it's only people who are alive that can choose are we together so watch this when you begin to walk with the Holy Spirit as you get saved you find out that God begins to lead you to faces. Eventually, some of you can be three, four people, maybe in a prayer group. You may be maybe friends on campus. Maybe, you know, people doing the same work. Eventually, as you walk with God, the mandate of the king starts diverging you people to different places. 
somebody now starts developing an appetite for prayer and fasting that he cannot explain another person starts developing an appetite for wealth and abundance that he may even feel guilty and say is it i really like money is the king separating you because his mandate this is the second part your mandate to the king is your loyalty your surrender and your obedience but your mandate from the king to the nations is what you call purpose is what you call assignment are we together when you come to jesus and say lord what is my purpose he says that's not the issue let me verify the issue of your loyalty first the mission is follow me not follow it when you follow me when i am sure you have gotten to a point ah my soul says yes says yes says yes my soul says yes says yes ladies and gentlemen please hear me i hate to be a bearer of bad news but i'm just telling you a story in experience it can take you 10 years to finally surrender your will this will thing we're talking about as if it just happens in a weekend it is a long journey a long journey of of listen he will start touching all the things that matter to you until nothing is left now this is the part of the christian faith that many believers do not know this is what separates men and makes others so powerful in the spirit the journey to maturity is not an easy thing this is where it says take up your cross what is the cross you know what the cross is dying daily that someday god can just tell you okay you just he will wait till you get your arrears you've not been paid six months as soon as it lands he says my son i heard you pray three days ago and you were rolling on the ground carry that seed it's not about the money he can make someone to give you 10 times there is an idol he's removing from your heart it's not about the money at all why will he call abraham in genesis chapter 12 watch this i'm showing you the portrait abraham had met him he called him in awe of the chaldeans as an idol worshiper and he began to propose certain blessings abraham thought it would just come like that Genesis chapter 12 will only be fulfilled when he got to chapter 22. One morning, Abraham is sleeping and he hears a voice from heaven. And he says, Abraham, get up, take thee thy son. Uh -uh. Is this part of the plan? You didn't, there was no discussion about this. Thy only son whom thou lovest. He says, go and offer him upon a mount that I will show you. That means he did not even know where he was going to. Today we say Abraham's blessings are mine. You are right. But Abraham's responsibility must also be yours. <laughs> now I'm not being sarcastic. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, listen. This is a kingdom meeting. That's why you see it's not good to judge people because you don't know what face someone is. You will see people as if they are total failures. There is a walking that God is doing in them. The king is purging them. You will find somebody who graduated three years ah i just sense the power of god as i just made this statement three years five years others are going forward and you are still behind god who did i offend i served you on campus what what are you trying to do with my life hear me when the king begins to walk on you he does not walk on you as a group even if you are husband and wife, he will isolate you with a surgeon's precision and begin to work on you. I'm saying this because some of you are in that season now. You do not even know. It's true that there is a prophet in the making, but you just thought that having the vision of the prophet, then the next thing, anointing will come. You don't even know the name of your journey right now with God. You are a prophet, but he told you to go and walk with the ushers. And you are cleaning the toilet and say, God, is it if 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 I'm is it this is my will? Do it. And you are wondering, ah, the way of the spiritual man is hard. This is why when God finally anoints them, He suffers no man to do them wrong. He can even reprove kings because before the anointing comes, blood must be dripping on that altar. 
I hope you believe what I'm telling you. Uh, you want authority over nations? You want authority over territories? It's not about English. No, it takes more than that. There is a track record in the spirit that you cannot fake, that cannot be politicized. Are we together? Jesus I know. Look at Paul. Paul met Jesus the Savior. He thought that was all. The journey of Paul will start for the next 19 years locked in the wilderness of Arabia not knowing what even Jesus himself when he was born with all the prophecies on his head he met two prophets already Anna the prophetess she spoke to him Simeon the prophet he spoke to him plus the fact that he is the word for 18 years you will call Jesus a failure 18 years the same Jesus who will be your savior the Bible goes silent about Jesus. If Jesus were your son, he would say, I don't know what kind of prophecy I receive on your bed, but 18 years of a useless life. And the next time we hear of Jesus, he's age 30. You would call him a failure by our statistics. 30, you've not begun anything in your life with all the opportunities there. Good mother, responsible father, and yet it was at that 30 when he was coming, John said, behold the lamb. He could not say that about the 12 year old Jesus. Watch this. When he announced, when, when John announced Jesus and baptized him, you would, thought immediately, you would think that immediately after that, ministry should start. The Bible said the same spirit now drove him to the wilderness. So Jesus goes to the wilderness, no friends, no counselors, no nothing, and he's praying like a madman. How do you pray when you are the word? Praying about what? When it is the word that solves all problems. Not even Jesus was spared from this pattern. I'm explaining it to someone right now. This is a kingdom conference. You don't preach what I'm saying in a crusade ground. No. You reveal Jesus as Savior. Come as you are. You see people just laughing. They don't know that the kind of journey. <laughs> and, and you are not lying. You are not lying. <laughs> are we together? We look for somewhere and pray now. So Jesus is done fasting 40 days and 40 nights. And guess who came? Satan. Satan, your Satan. Why do you think he should fear you when he came to? How do you finish praying and fasting? And the first person you see are not angels. Say, Well done, Satan. And when he got there, he acted as if he did not know that Jesus was serious with the Father. You are hungry, don't lie, don't deny it. You are hungry, turn this stone to bread. And Jesus said, It is written. Then the Bible says he took him to a high pinnacle, the holy city, and said, fall down. For it is also written, he will put his angels charge over you. Satan is quoting scripture. They will bear you up upon their wings, lest ye dash your feet against a stone. Then he takes him into an exceeding high mountain. I don't have the time tonight. These are the three levels of temptation. Every man must survive. The first is about your personal self individualism turn this stone to bread satisfy use the anointing you have use ministry for your personal gratification and jesus said no the agenda of the kingdom is bigger than me alone then the next test is your spirituality be careless about your spiritual life he took him up a holy mountain and said fall down be careless after all there are angels who will preserve you and jesus said no there is a responsibility component to my work and the final one which is the test of influence and dominion he took him into an exceeding the bible did not say he took him around he took him on a mountain into a mountain and from that mountain is a spiritual location you see all the glories of the world do you know what that means that from that mountain you watch the control room of the cosmos this is what makes other nations blessed this is what Birds, fraternities and groups and he said listen 
I am the God of this world. This is a control room. We can negotiate this with you. Ladies and gentlemen, when you truly walk with God, you will get to a level in the spirit where this same offer will be given to you. I promise you. Listen, listen. It's a difficult offer. Except, look, if you've not risen to certain levels, this message will not make sense to you. But you will rise to a level where the devil will say, you are going to be great anyway. Come. You will now understand why the Bible says, what shall it profit a man? If he gains, hold on, gain. Gain is a language of business. And for gain to happen, there must be an exchange. So who is the other side bringing the gain? Satan will collect your soul and give you the world. Many people on earth today, many of those you celebrate around the world, they were taken to that same mountain. And that negotiation happened. Unfortunately, many said, what is in my soul? Take. This is why when Satan sees you prospering, even as your soul prospers, there is a problem. Because two of them should not go hand in hand. You should not prosper as your soul prospers. That means I can verify the source of your prosperity by checking the condition of your soul while you rise. When the condition of your soul goes down as you rise, you are fraternized with Babylon. I'm trying to be as simple as possible. It was not my intention to just there. We'll, we'll, we'll find somewhere and pray. The king, the savior. The Savior saves with no conditions, but the King does not use without conditions. You are loved without conditions, but you are not used without conditions. God loves everybody without conditions, but He will not, when it has to do with birthing the program of God, it is not without conditions. Please hear me. I'm saying this because in this meeting, and in this conference for those who are here and those following online there is destiny crying from the spirit in this end time god is looking for men and women who he can trust i'll repeat myself tomorrow but let me just tell you three levels of authority that are given to believers in honor to their loyalty their surrender and their obedience to the king experientially not just by confession lord i love you mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. when it has to do with honoring the king is your life that does the speaking not just your words is someone learning number one the first level of authority that is given to believers in honor to your loyalty to the king is authority over things authority over things the material world authority over things things like finances isn't it amazing that that's the least level of spiritual authority authority over things you begin to have a very strange dominion over things you will call it all kinds of names but it comes from heaven in honor to your loyalty the second level are you ready now the second level is authority over nations when you read the parable of the talents study what he gave them the first thing he gave them was things talents then when they qualified the blessing was you have been faithful in this i will place you over nations do you know what it means to have authority over nations that means god will never carry out something within that nation ignoring you Can I hide this from Abraham? That God wants to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And then he comes to meet one man to liaise with him. And Abraham says, wait. I have an interest in Sodom and Gomorrah. Negotiated the release of Lot. Authority over people and nations. Look, when this dimension of authority comes upon you, you will command a strange order of influence upon the earth. Many fraternities and groups upon the earth attempt to use divination to simulate this kind of influence. There is a level of influence that cannot happen by social media. 
there is a level of influence that cannot happen just by lobbying yourself it is given in honor of your loyalty to the king are we together the third and the highest level of authority that can be given to man is authority over God's program on earth authority over his program that God can say for the next 10 years this is how I am moving in Africa I put you in charge of that program authority over things authority over nations and authority over his program you will find out all through scripture that there were many programs that were done by God and there were individuals who spearheaded that program if it was Gideon the destruction of the Midianites are we together Moses you find all the individuals who stood out in the Bible they were not just given authority over nations there was a program that God had and it pleased the Lord that they become the ones who spearheaded that program my call tonight there are two calls I'm going to make as we wrap up call number one is for those who have not encountered Jesus as Savior and listen it does not matter whether you have been in church forever ladies and gentlemen please hear me I submit to you by the authority of Scripture that if you have not met Jesus as Savior there is no possibility to be a recipient of eternal life he calls for you to begin a new experience an experience that imparts upon you the life of God and gives you that opportunity to know him this is eternal life he said john 17 and verse 3 that they may know you the one true god and jesus whom thou hast sent when you have an encounter with jesus you have eternal life he says this is the record that god has given us eternal life and that this life is in his son so that he that had the son heart life and the second call I'm going to be making is for people here who are saying apostle now I understand that the Spirit of God has been beckoning upon me to get to a point where I relinquish my will for the sake of his majesty relinquishing your will does not mean you are going to become a dummy or to become daft it simply means submitting your will to his will knowing that the thoughts he thinks towards you are not thoughts of evil he says but thoughts of good to bring you a future and an expected end those who you call champions in the kingdom are men who by the grace and the mercy of god have found a place in god's program to surrender their all you may have heard me say that the price for all of god is all of you not some of you our time is fast spent let me make that call now for those who are following online from across the nations and for someone who is in this place i'm certainly not looking for everybody but i know there's someone the spirit of god is speaking to you're up the balcony you are here perhaps outside and you're saying apostle i want you to give me a chance i sincerely want to make it right with jesus this is not just about church this is not just about religion i'm not pretending it i want a functional relationship with jesus that benefits my children my children's children and all who will come from me if there's anyone who wants to make that call i want you with with boldness and with gallancy leave your seat right now and may i please request that you come and stand in front of me here do not be afraid do not be ashamed come let's celebrate them as they come come i count one to five one come home come home when we recap, oh, come to Jesus softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling, calling no sinners. Calvary Bible Church, is this the best you can do for those who are coming? Come, young and old, come. Ibo Yoruba house are come. Doesn't matter what has happened or what has not happened. Come. Jesus is calling you. You will remember this conference for good. Come. For the sake of your children. Come. For the sake of your spouse. Come. For the sake of the destinies that are connected to you.
hallelujah this is what Jesus is able to do the Bible declares that no man cometh to the Father except by him ladies and gentlemen thank you for making the bold decision to be here many of you I presume are coming to Jesus for the first time others perhaps rededicating your life in any case you are most welcome the Bible says as many who will come to him that he will in no wise cast away and for those who are following online as I lead them to pray right there in your home your office or those who are watching by way of rebroadcast let this be your opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life distance is no barrier when it has to do with the business of Jesus may I request ladies and gentlemen in front please lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender remember what I taught you it is your heart and your mouth so let your heart do the believing while your mouth does the confessing say this after me loud and clear say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe that you are my Savior I believe that you are my Lord I believe that you are my king that you died for me and you rose again for my justification right now I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life I declare that eternal life is imparted right now to my spirit I am a child of God the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus from tonight I go forward ever and backward never in hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.